For the longest time now, I've been trying to come up with a format so that I could get back to making videos because Persistent World is a dead game, it is gay, and I am never playing it again, ever, 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 ever. So I considered doing game reviews for the longest time, and I was stopped by this misplaced sense of... I don't know, dignity, I suppose. I felt, well, I'm not really qualified to do that, so I just won't do it. But then the thought occurred to me, what would Donald Trump do? He'd probably just do it anyway, then become president. So, here we go. I started playing Warband because ever since I was a small boy, I wanted a game where I could be a sword-swinging macho man, cutting a bloody swath across a battlefield of an epic scale, fighting shoulder to shoulder with my brothers in arms. I think perhaps Lord of the Rings might have had something to do with that. So I wanted a game about large-scale battles. I wanted to be one of those guys. That guy, in fact. Him. Right there. There were some attempts to make such games. The first I found was Kingdom Under Fire. I enjoyed it very much when I was a small boy. But it doesn't hold up very well, because it's bad. Then there's the, let's be generous and say, cult classic, Spartan Total Warrior. Now, this one I loved and still do a bit, but, you know, there's only 12 or 14 levels. Not much replayability there, and the arena's shit. That brings me on to another point, actually, in regards to Spartan Total Warrior. This was clearly supposed to be part of some kind of franchise made by Creative Assembly, otherwise known as the Total War folks. So, what happened to it? This! This is what happened to it! This 30 FPS locked, conventionally unappealing game. I got this game when I was about 15 for the Xbox, because I'm a rebel me, right? I saw a trailer for it and thought, that could tickle my fancy. And well, it kind of did. The premise for this world is convoluted. Or you might even say not as much as it should be. I really can't tell. I only saw the opening cinematic for this recently for the first time after about seven years from first playing it. I swear, I've never seen it. Like, I think it's when the game fires up is when it's on, so you just don't see it. I'll be honest, anyway, I'm still none the wiser as to what's going on. I mean, I get the general theme. Bad things are happening in this nondescript Nord fantasy world. Kill everything. You play as a very, very burly Norseman called Skarin. So look at those pecs. Could grind me off them. He's also the most rhythmical Viking in all the land. Just look at him go. One, two, three, four, five, and flourish. He's a delight. He's a mute, by the way. Some might say this is so you can project onto him. Yeah, I can project onto this guy. It takes a while to understand what exactly are the rules of this world. Okay, so I'm brought back from the dead, so that's on the table. The enemy are strange humanoid sort of demons or zombies. They're only ever described as minions. There's also larger minions who look like they've been ripped off directly from Dark Souls. Whatever, I don't know what that is. Also, there's dragons who, for reasons, are on your side and... I'm out of here. What I can glean from the actual story is that there are these two goddesses. One's called Freya, and the other's called Hell. Yeah. I'll give you three guesses which is the bad one. I think you'll only need one, though. They don't get along well because Hell is a whore, and Freya isn't. According to Freya, anyway. You know, we just take her word for it. That's the prologue, by the way, and Skaren's just like, Sure, I believe you. Then he departs to dismantle Hell's Legion, one camp at a time. No more about the story gets heard except for these unintelligible visions that Skarin has. One of which you have because you speak to one of your shamans- Yeah, there's shamans too, I forgot. Good and bad. You know, the bad ones look like fucking Gollum in a rag. You know, it's weird. So yeah, you speak to this shaman who tells you, Hey, Skarin, you're adopted, lol. Go get these herbs, take them to a cave, and burn them really slowly and inhale the fumes then your past will be revealed. So I was just like, no. You know, because I did this shit in Far Cry 3 and it was boring as fuck. I tried console commands, but there is no console. So I relented, I go to the cave, I murder everything in there, and... The Still none the wiser. So, to hell with the story then, let's focus on the game. As I said, you dismantle Hell's Fortress one camp at a time, and yet this is more or less the case. So yeah, you sneak in, or run in, and kill everything. 
the killing is the only important part. Doesn't matter how you do it. You free the Vikings and then the sun inexplicably comes out immediately. You liberate these camps for reasons which usually pertain to whatever your next major mission is. So, for instance, you would liberate a fucking lumber mill because you need siege equipment, you know, whatever. I, don't, I wasn't really paying attention. Sometimes, however, you're just doing it to free warriors who will come and fight for you. You might think this is only so you can progress through the game, so it's like, oh, yes, your army numbers have increased, and then you'll go to the next mission. See, in my cynical brain, when I first played this, I was thinking, there's no way the battles in this game could possibly be as big as advertised. You know how you spend the whole damn game in Mass Effect or Dragon Age just assembling an army for it to fight a battle off-screen? Well, on that note, forget not. Creative Assembly, do this shit for a living. did a very good job updating Viking Conquest, didn't they? Right, so, in conclusion, if you, like me, have a deep-seated male desire and need to kill, 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 this is for you. If you are expecting longevity, there is none. Only more repetition. I give this a thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs>